weird not having anybody come on you. Hey guys, welcome in once again. Jim here, and we are going to be taking a look at something quite a bit different. The whole concept of the feeling of this knife is very different from most of the knives that I personally collect. But man, is it friggin' cool. This is the Precision Knife Works Warn Tech. The deal with this knife is it's on pre-order right now for 250 bucks. Once the pre-order is done, the price I believe is going to be going up. Also, there's a four payment option on precisionknifeworksusa.com when you go to pre-order this so you can break up that 250 over four payments. That's a nice option, right? You don't have to pay for it all all up front. That's kind of nice. I had a unique plan for this review, but it didn't quite work out, unfortunately. I thought the design of the knife looked awesome. I love the blade shape on this particularly. But I looked at it like a lot of titanium frame locks and went, this looks like a really good foundation for customizing and modifying. And I had planned to team up with and promote a knife customizing company whose work I admire and I wanted to do a small collaboration with them showing the knife here before and then after they did their work on it and already being a fan of their work and seeing the level of work they put into their knives the finishing quality all that kind of stuff I was like they're the perfect choice this is going to be great and it's going to be really awesome to showcase their work to all of my subscribers and anybody else that happens across the video. And hopefully they'll get a whole bunch of orders from people sending in their knives going, hey, I want to do that to the blade. I want to do that to the finish. I want to do that to the pocket clip, that kind of shit. And I really wanted to show the potential of this particular knife because I really, really dig this look as it ships. But I keep looking at it going, man, there is so much potential here to do something wild and crazy and personalized that I think these are going to be very, very popular for that reason. But they didn't see any value in that, unfortunately. Um, I'm not really entirely certain why, because I was like, you know, even at the end, I'm like, you know what we should do? Do all this work to it, and then I'll do it as a, as a giveaway. And then not only do people get to see the incredible work that you guys do on video, but somebody's going to get to keep it. And with as excited as so many of you guys get about customized and unique knives, I thought that was going to be a great opportunity for one of my viewers to get a really rad-ass knife customized to be even more rad ass that didn't work out so hey man it is what it is not much i can do about it now but i wasn't going to sit on this review forever and wait and wait and wait and i didn't want to substitute to just any knife pimpers out there there's a lot of them out there i'm not familiar with many of them because most Knife pimpers turned into knife makers themselves over time. So I'm not familiar with a lot of them. I looked at this knife and went, yeah, this is the perfect foundation. This would be great for that. But hey, whatever. It's all right. Let's get into the TLDW. Too long, didn't watch. For those with short attention spans that don't want to hear everything about the knife, they just want the highs and lows. Give me the overview and that's it. Okay, here we go. For me, the pros on this knife are the ergonomics. 
neutral, but still kind of an organic feel in the hand. Very, very nicely done. It feels really good. And that jimping is friggin' fantastic. Really, really, really feels good. Another pro. I love the overall size. It's a really good EDC size. Your, your overall length on this is 8 inches with a blade length of 3.5 inches. So it's pretty much that sweet spot for many, many people. It, it looks like a bigger knife than it is. It feels almost like a bigger knife than it really is. But it's compact. It's easy to carry, easy to deploy. It's lightweight. It's got a sweet action. It's fast and it's smooth. It's not, you know, completely drop shutty like some people want. You don't need that. That's not an indication of quality. But it is very, very smooth on its caged bearings. And the detent is set perfectly. And while normally we look at an interior cut, lock bar cut, a relief cut as being aesthetically pleasing. It's very, very hard to get consistency from knife to knife to knife on that detent pressure. And now again, this is the only example I've handled. I haven't held like 20 of them or anything. It's just this one. But the detent is literally perfect. Super easy to flick out. And if I want to slow roll it with my thumb, I can do that. It's not often that you see a perfectly straight edge Warncliffe with such a dramatic drop down at the tip. Super cool. A lot of times you would just see that portion and go, oh, that's going to be a sheep's foot. It's not because this is a straight edge. It has no curvature. It's not coming up to meet the tip. So it really is a Warncliffe. All right. Oh, what else for pros? I love the clean stone wash finish. Looks good. So the frame was bead blasted and then stone washed. It's a nice, clean, monochromatic look. Blade finish is pretty good, too. It's nothing crazy. It's not fancy. I got it a little bit dirty, unfortunately. Let's break out a uh, Jack Wolf cloth here. Oh, no, this is old Chris Reeve cloth. There we go. Now, the cons. Are there any cons? Not really. I don't really see anything that I can tear apart on this knife and go, geez, I wish it was different, except for this. Kowtowing to the people that go, I won't buy a knife that don't have no reversible clip. Oh, my God. It's just, it's too much. It makes an otherwise clean design ugly as shit just by having removable hardware to move the clip over. Whether it was an open space or like this, I, I am glad that they put a filler tab in there. It helps it look less bad. But listen, lefties, cut this shit out. Quit bitching and complaining that every normal knife that comes out is made for the majority of the buying public. You are the minority. And I can say this because I am a lefty. I'm a lefty in the strictest sense. I write with my left hand. But everything else I do is with my right. So all my knife manipulations and everything is with my right hand. So yes, I understand how you feel being a lefty. But don't, let's not burden the rest of the world with our problems, you know? Because that's disruptive to a really nice, clean, monochromatic design. I, I love the look of this knife. Then I get to the filler tab and the unnecessary screw and go, why? Oh, I know why. It's not their design choice. It's they don't want to be bitched out by every lefty that sends them a message going, hey, why don't you make one for the rest of us? You mean the fewer than 15% of the buying public? Sure, we'll just stop everything and make a whole bunch of knives that if you yourself don't actually see that it's available, 
you're not going to buy it, and I'm left stuck with it. That's the way a lot of brands have to look at it because it is such a small percentage of the community and of the buying public. So again, I'm not saying I hate lefties. I am a lefty. So I could say that shit. (laughs) Anyway, that's really about it. I think everything else is so good down to when I put this knife in my hand and I feel that jimping, I feel it grip into my thumb. I've cut with this knife a few times. It cuts nicely. Um, And I think if I had to have another con in there, I wish the behind the edge thickness was a little bit less. It has been cutting perfectly fine, of course, but it's not going to be that, you know, wonderful slicing machine that maybe you have in the back of your mind. Behind the edge thickness is, uh, looks like 18 thousands, which, I mean, that's not bad, but for a knife like this, I would have loved for it to be 10 or 11, not 18. Because 20 is almost the maximum threshold that a lot of us look at for an EDC knife. And this is pushing in close to that. Now, these are manufactured by QSP. And we've seen a lot of really, really high quality QSP knives. Again, I always go back to the EMP EDC Nimble. Those Nimbles were so well made. It's still one of my favorite knives. QSP does a really great job, and you don't have to pay out your ass for it. I mean, a $250 investment? How crazy is that? Yep, it feels really, really good. Something that doesn't necessarily fall into the con list, but more of a wish list, I wish it also had a flipper tab. I really wish it had a flipper tab. This would have been a really great flipper, the way this detent feels. Even if it was a uh, a notch back here in the frame where you were accessing the, the tang of the blade and flipping straight back like a Vero engineering knife, for example or a nimble, I think it would have been a really great choice to have both methods. And not every knife needs to have more than one method of deployment. It's nice when we can get it. I think it's a definite plus when we can get it. But it's not something that we should be looking at at a knife and going, oh, well, that's only a flipper, or that's only thumb studs, or that's only a blade window. It can only be reverse flicked. It's nice if we could have additional options, but it's not a necessity. And I think a lot of people designing knives right now are kind of feeling that pressure. And I'm going through it myself, actually. As I'm about to release my first production folder, and I had chosen purposefully to make that a flipper only because I'm a flipper person. And back when I started designing that knife, you really didn't see a proliferation of these multiple deployment methods. So now as I'm working on my upcoming designs to follow that up, I'm killing myself trying to find room on the blade to add a fuller or a blade window or something where people can either use the flipper tab or to access it in some other way. And it's a pain in the ass. Let me tell you, when you have figured out what your grind height needs to be on a specific height blade, then you're thinking, well, shit, I've got to add another eighth of an inch of height to have a fuller running down the length of the blade or a blade window or some kind of blade opening where somebody can reverse flick it. It's a, it's, it's a burden on you as a designer to go, okay, I've got my design. I, I, I have it looking how I want it to look. I have my primary bevels set up where I know it's going to be a good slicey cutty knife. Well, now I'm going to have to either make the blade taller, which changes everything about how it's going to fit in the handle. It's going to change your backspacer options and everything else. Or I'm going to have to lower my grind, 
which is going to change the bevel angle significantly, which may make it perform, I don't want to say worse, but less good than it would have initially, just to add a, an option where somebody can shove their friggin' fingernail into the blade. It's very, very difficult to, to have that in the back of your mind when you're trying to make a specific kind of knife, especially if it's for a specific purpose. So, yeah, the pressure is definitely there. Because if you're a smart knife maker and or designer, you're paying attention to what people are buying. You're paying attention in the Facebook groups and forums and everywhere else and, and knife reviews on YouTube and listening to what people like and dislike about modern knife designs. So if you're smart, you're, you're taking all those things into account and going, okay, people really, really, really hate X. I'm not going to do X on my designs. People, people really absolutely want these three things. I'm going to add these three things to my future designs. It's smart to always pay attention to that because at the end of the day, number one, you want to make your customers happy, but number two, you're ordering hundreds and hundreds of knives at a cost of hundreds per knife. If they don't all sell, they can spell financial ruin for you in one single model offering. Try to recover from a twenty to $50,000 loss over the course of six months. It's not easy. And you're, you'll be sitting there kicking yourself in the, in the ass going, what did I miss? Well, why? I think my knife is fantastic. Why isn't it selling? Well, because you didn't pay attention. You didn't hear that people don't want this type of steel. They want this type of steel. They don't want this type of deployment method. They want this type or multiple types or whatever it may be. You missed a meeting somewhere and it's going to cost you. So yes, you do have to pay attention to it, but you don't have to cater. You don't, you can't cater to everybody. You know, if there's a hundred people talking about this knife right now in the comments down below, maybe 10 of those people are actually potential buyers. And out of those hundred people, they might find 90 different things to critique about that knife. Things that they love and things that they don't love. So you can't make everyone happy. That's impossible. But I think the way that this was very smartly designed, the way that it feels in the hand, the very aggressive shape to the blade profile, I think that this is a winner all the way around. And I think as people begin to experiment doing laser etching, of patterns and themes into these very large, plain titanium handles as they anodize pivots, as they anodize pocket clips, and start customizing these and making them unique to themselves, I think people are really going to go ape shit over these. So them's my thoughts on the uh, Precision Knifeworks Warntech. I forgot to give you the specs. Let me go ahead and do that now. Overall length, 8 inches. Blade length, 3.5 inches. CPM 20 CV blade steel at 59 to 61 Rockwell. Again, I can't not say this on this knife just because I like it. I have to say it because I've said this for years. A 59 to 61 is a huge spread. It doesn't sound like it. But going across two or three Rockwell points is a huge variance. I would much rather hear 59 to 60 or 60 to 61. That's, that's, I, I, yeah, I, I really would prefer that. Um, so I can't let my bias for this knife, the fact that I really love everything else about it, make me say something other than what I've said for years and years on this channel of, for every knife. Cutting edge is 3.3 inches, blade stock 140 thousandths thick, behind the edge 0 0.018. Pretty good, not super crazy 
laser-like slicey, but pretty darn good. And I guarantee if they didn't need to have this blade window in there and it was a three-quarter height grind, it would be even thinner behind the edge. So again, going back to my rant from earlier, sometimes you have to sacrifice one thing that people want in order to satisfy another group of people. Uh, let's see. Oh, and caged bearings, by the way. So yeah, that's my thoughts. I apologize for forgetting to do the specs until the end of the video. I don't know that I've ever done that before. But I, I had a lot of opinions on this knife, and I wanted to kind of get them out there. And I think everybody that picks one of these up is going to be super happy with that choice. It looks aggressive. It looks cool as shit. It feels great in the hand. It's got a nice action. Another thing that I really like is the fact that the blade window has been nicely dehorned, smoothed out, rounded out. So when you're flicking it, you're not shredding bits of your fingernail off. How many times have you watched a review where the reviewer is constantly doing that? And the harsh edge inside of the blade window is actually shearing off parts of their fingernail as they're doing it. And you're watching the dust fly all over the place. You're like, whoa, dude, man. So a lot of thought was put into this knife and how it was going to be used, how it was going to be handled. They did a great job. All right, that's it for me, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And I'll see you on the next video.